Also, depressing. What a great word. <laughs> <laughs> so did anyone don't. hit up your DMs? No, no one have. Oh, dude, I was actually really disappointed because I saw the episode previous. No DMs. Damn. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Nerd Locker Podcast, your entertainment podcast for everything movies, television, video games, and more. My name is Adam. I'm Oliver. And today, we're just going to talk some shit. And we're going to talk some shit about a random subject, uh, but not random to us because we both did it at some point in our lives. So, okay, so some backstory, guys. I met Oliver. Oh, we're going through, like, history now. Kind of, in a way. So I met Oliver 16 years ago. Disgusting. Uh, and it was at a party where we both of our moms like worked at the same bank, and it was like a office party or whatever. And I met Oliver, and I showed him a magic trick because I got super into magic when I was like 14, 15, 16. I was really into it. I worked at a magic shop, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't see him again for a year, <laughs> which was the next and then cool party. that's when I, it took me a year to learn like two tricks. I think so. Yeah. Holy fuck, dude. What kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so the next year I see him and he has a deck of cards and it made me super jealous because he had like a uh, one of the black uh, versions of the cards. So like they were all like super cool. And he like showed Do you me remember a... that deck. Yeah. Black Tiger. No. Was it? No, it was Raider. Was it Raider? It was okay. Raider. <laughs> so you got Raiders from Illusionist. If anyone even knows that. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know. If they're still around. But yeah, so he got Black Raiders, and he showed me a couple of tricks, and yeah, that's how like we became friends. But anyways, that all to say, we're going to talk about magic. <laughs> yeah, this is foreign territory for me, bud. <laughs> yeah, uh, not so much. So we're going to talk about like what was the big thing in the early 2000s when it came to magic. And this is inspired by, I want to give credit to Chris James. Uh, he made a video a couple of years ago talking about... Uh, Chris Angel and the crazy shit that was on his show. And as someone that was a magician, I used to watch a lot of stuff. You guys seen Harley on the show. We used to watch a lot of like uh, the David Blaine street magic that had Mikey Day in it. And it was like making fun of David Blaine and stuff like that. And I don't know, like yeah. magic was just really, really prominent in the early. It was 2000s. more like the shock value of like the freak magic. You I went guess. into a Walgreens, you went into a uh, Walmart or Target. There was magic kits everywhere. It's always like, uh, and then Chris Angel, I know, had one at Walgreens at the time because I remember I bought it as a kid. Mm. Uh, but like, it was such a big craze. But then you look back at like what they did at least specifically chris Angel. fucking weird dude and i'm not trying to bring up any specific things i'm not gonna show anything from this you guys can just go find what he did and like all his tricks and see the cringe in it but i wanted to like encompass everything as another fan of chris angel and like what was the fucking appeal back then to now because you can't i can't process it i don't now. understand either but Going back to me as a kid, I remember seeing Chris Angel. So this aired on A&E, and this... Also, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it was on A&E. And the kind of shows that were on A&E was like Chris Angel Mind Freak. You had Dog the Bounty Hunter, and you had like Gene Simmons Family Jewels over here. Like the... You watch way too much A&E, dude. No, no. I was just saying these are the things that were on. I know. Chris Angel happened between. No, I don't know. So uh, I know Gene Simmons Family Jewels my dad watched. Dog mm. the Bounty Hunter, I just know, was, like, the ending credits to the Chris Angel episode. So, uh, there was that. But what I'm saying is more of, like, it would just, it felt exclusive. It felt like, oh, I can watch this on a show that was added onto most cable networks, like Dish, Direct. Like, everyone had A&E, like, added in. So, like, right. it was just that extra thing. So, you get to see something that's magic, that's different. It wasn't on television and I think for me, I don't know if I was more of like, oh, Chris Angel's so cool as much as Magic is so cool. In my opinion, I don't know if that counts to everyone know. else. Chris Angel sold an image though, like he did he, because like, like that I. Was his thing. But that's the thing; he did sell an image of a couple of things. So like, <laughs> guys, this is me personally. This is not anyone else. But understand this. So Chris Angel definitely influenced my decision to dye parts of my hair red. Hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> you have pictures? Not anymore. 
Not on. Would you burn them? No, they're on. <laughs> they're either deleted off Facebook or they're on the MySpace that I cannot access. We got a. We got. Oh, we don't have a producer. No, we don't. <laughs> the Snorlax. We got it. Hey, producer. Snorlax, get on it, bud. Come but, on. Okay, so guys, like, there's that, but also at the same time, like, on the opposite end of that, I think Chris Angel is the reason I have body issues to this day, because like I felt like always that, takes off his shirt. Like that's what you had to be. To be a magician, fucking eight pack. No, just to be a man. Like I was like, oh, eh. dude, get out of here. No, no way, like, really. At an impressionable age, at like thirteen, fourteen, when I first was You're like, dude, to I gotta him, go to the gym. Like, yeah, like that's what you really think you have to do. As like on top of that, like Chris Angel made it very much seem that like the peak man physique had to be Chris Angel. That that as well as like you get to flirt with people no matter who they are by using mat like magic is your way to like date people and it you always done that. i had you had i, 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 yeah. I thought you'd done it like yeah. I didn't in my you'd past i have yet. used it to do that so is harley um you know like, <laughs> he's been on the show before yeah he has been on the show before but like it has been used to like talk to people, break the ice, things like that. It's a good icebreaker. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I will say like doing magic definitely helped make connections for me. Like I met a lot of people through that. Mm -hmm. I met a lot of other magicians that taught me so many things that I use to this day. Even when someone says, "Oh, you know magic? Do a trick." Like I'll go I to hate like that. By the way, I go. I have a go-to trick that's enough to like push people away. Enough to be like they're amazed. They may want to see it again, but they don't. They're not I mad if they don't those see anything too. Else, you know, but I, now I'm getting the thing because of like the the VA stuff. Yeah, and now I'm gonna like, oh, do a voice, do an accent. I'm like, dude, fuck you. Yeah, so Take it, 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 it kind of gets to that point because like when I did it, it was like pulling teeth to get people to see magic, and nowadays it's like as soon as someone knows you can do magic, they want to see a trick. And I wish it was the opposite because I would have been a more successful magician mm. <laughs> if that was the case. So like. I, I look back at that, and then I look at, like, David Blaine, and I've done a couple of, like, rabbit hole searches into David Blaine a couple months back, and it just got to the point where, like, David Blaine is not a magician, per se, as much as he's a performance artist, as well as, like, he pushes his body to certain limits, and he has everything that David Blaine, everything that David Blaine has done that pushes his body to limits is real. Okay. Everything that David Blaine's done, magic-wise, card-wise, things like that, it's sleight of hand, it's plants, it's everything else that you could think of. I'm not trying to expose him. I'm just saying, like, there's probably some kind of explanation of that. And there's an explanation to the things that he does that push his body, but again, it's still crazy to think about, and I think that's what gives David Blaine the edge over Chris Angel. Unfortunately, I'm not shitting on Chris Angel. I'm not trying to. Like, that's not what I'm trying to say right now. But what I am trying to say is Chris Angel is a performance artist. That's it. He he, uh, he like, builds it up a lot. Performance artist, and that's all I'm going to say. Whereas David Blaine pushes himself to different limits. And do I agree with everything that he probably pushed himself to? No, you're putting your life at risk. But at the same time, David Blaine does have the ability, and this is what I'm going to say about this, is he has the ability to um, – he drinks like basically water and he says i can like i have a aquarium in my body and spits out a goldfish a frog oh a frog okay sorry out of his stomach and he does actually swallow a frog before the trick starts and regurgitates it up he has his ability to regurgitate things up that he needs disgusting to. yeah it's disgusting habit but like or ability not habit, but ability, but like it helps with his tricks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's that. And like, I don't know, it, it was reality TV guys back then. And we get it every now and then we get uh, David Blaine doing like, oh, let's put himself in ice or let's uh, sit or uh, stand on something for like hours. Or the one of the more recent ones he had done was like being in the electrical outlet. And like he accidentally shocked himself at one point. Is he still doing water. shit? He is, but it's every now and then. Uh. And David Blaine has a dark backstory of like he dealt with a lot of dark things in his past that made sense of why he did what he did. 
with these things or why he does what he does. Mm -hmm. But now he's married. He has kids. It's a different, uh, I guess, like motivation. So I don't know. Overall, I think my experience with magic per se was I was exposed to all these things. It inspired me to continue the craft, but within the craft, I moved away from the idols and just moved on to my own thing. And that happened in the Clearwater ship with Chris Angel. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So, guys, if you don't know, Chris Angel did a building implosion escape trick in 2000. And I actually don't remember when he did it. Hold on. Let me see real fast. It was before you knew me, I think. Yeah. But did you go to that? At no, all? I didn't. I know you and Harley did. Yeah. Me and Harley did go to that. Or it might have been the year you met me, like in that weird year. No, I don't think so. I think... Uh, Okay, this was in two. Really? What year? Two thousand eight. It was the year I met you. Yeah, I, that's yeah. what I thought because we wow. talked about it. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, me and Harley went to Clearwater because we live in Florida, guys. Uh, where that is doesn't matter, <laughs> but we're close to Clearwater and Middle East. Yeah. <laughs> we're close to Clearwater, and so me and Harley go to this building implosion. And the basis of was Chris Angel was getting into a building that was supposed to get uh, demolished to make way for a new hotel. And he was going to chain himself within the building on the balcony and try to escape out of the building before it goes off. And I've never seen that on TV. Actually. Yeah. So me and Harley went to go watch this and they had like this big inflatable uh, screen thing. And when the building imploded, me and Harley, well, mostly me, not Harley, because at this point, I was just starting to learn film. Like, I was dabbling in it, because I was still in high school, but, like, I was starting to watch movies more, watch behind the scenes more mm -hmm. on my DVDs. So, like, I was getting more into that because of, like, Chris Angel and stuff. So, like, he kind of fucked himself over in my realization. But, like, I started watching that more. So, when I watched what happened on the screen it kind of blew my mind because I'm like, oh, fuck, this is fake. And before I get into why it's fake, here's a word from our sponsor. Friends of the show. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist in their network. Then you could talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off at your first month at BetterHelp.com dot com slash nerdlocker and that's b e t t e r h e l p dot com slash nerdlocker and we've also linked them down below in the description hi classic horror icon here you're probably wondering what's going on yeah well let me ask you do you like scary movies y yes then boy do i have some news for you there's this business called Seventh Inc, founded by Matthew Johnson, a local artist in the Florida area who creates amazing clothing with his own original Halloween-inspired art. Not only do they have t-shirts, hoodies, and dresses, they have pins, magnets, hats, and more. Wow, these designs are actually pretty sick. Here, try one yourself. <laughs> oh shit, these are actually pretty nice. Check under the shirt. Yeah. How did you get two shirts on me? Uh, what are you doing? I keep me the shirts. That's seventh ink, ladies and gentlemen. And if you follow the link below and use our code ANGEL at checkout, you'll get 10% off your entire order. That's A-N-G-E-L at checkout for 10% off your order. Isn't that right, little buddy? Aw, not another one. And we're back. So the thing that really blew my mind was there was nine screens that were supposed to be like different uh cameras inside of the building okay and when the building boom went off all of the screens went to snow 
So if you guys know, like static, yeah, okay. So if you guys know, when it comes to film or cameras or blah blah blah, it doesn't all go off. They don't the all go time. off. It should go one at a at time. time. When they all went off, immediately at that point, I knew this is fake. Like I knew this is not gonna happen. And where me and Harley stood was at the side of the building. So like you have the front that faces the water. And then you have the left side, which is more like towards the rest of the Clearwater Strip. Mm -hmm. And then you have the right side, which is more towards the beach and that roundabout. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're on that side. So we can see we saw him literally pop out the side of the building. So they installed a slide, guys. That really? Went down. Yes. I'm going to expose this. if it ha- I feel like it's been exposed already. There was a slide that was installed, which is fine. Emergency slide. I get it. But the picture or the videos of him after he gets out the balcony and starts running into the hallways to get out. Because he gets like a couple of floors down before they all go to snow at the same time. Which is pre-recorded from him going in it probably earlier that day mm-hmm. or like another time and like doing all that stuff. But, like, we saw him literally pop out. And then what we actually, like, I mean, like, bit for bit, you could probably find this online. In the rubble, you can see him clearly walking. We saw him walking from the side of the sidewalk up into the rubble, throw soot on himself. Really? And walk out out of the rubble. Wow. Yeah. Which, again, I understand the performance. Don't advertise that live when you have people that watch you from the angles that you don't want people to see. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of things there, like, a lot of variables, people driving, people on the other side, at, like, the restaurant, at, like... I feel like maybe it was just that time where he just didn't give a fuck. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It just... It it did happen towards the end of his show, like, the end of the show run and everything like that. Yeah, that that was the last thing I saw him in, probably. Yeah, so, like, it, it was all that. But reality tv has just gotten crazy it was crazy back in the early 2000s especially with magic but one thing i want to bring up with reality tv (laughs) chris james also covered another thing called uh recently uh if you guys don't know it's called uh milf manor is this (laughs) is this a recent show or is it like a 2000 thing no it's a recent show, and I want you to listen to this right now, okay? <laughs> I want Oliver, real fast. Oliver, I want you to think. Okay. This is a reality TV show, a reality dating TV show. Yeah. Give me your best shot at what this show's about. Okay. And okay. then I'm going to tell you what it's okay, really okay. about. There's a manor. Uh huh. It's split into MILFs and like hunkadories, which is like hot men. Okay. Who like to fuck moms. Okay. And they just battle royale it in the best possible non-sexual way. Okay. Now they fucking. Okay. Is that, am I close? Okay. Am I close? Kinda. Really? All right, ready? Okay. Okay. So guys, if you haven't heard of this show. <laughs> come on, come Okay. On. You open up, you have all your mills. All your moms, right? And they're like, hey, I'm a mom. You know, the oldest <laughs> is 59. The, old- the oldest is 59, right? So they all come in. They're like, I'm age. here to find all these hot dudes. Like, I'm looking for my young stallion, blah, blah, blah. And then the men come in. No. What do you think? Are they old? No. Are, are they children? No. The men are all of these moms sons what you're <laughs> stop you're I actually swear to god what do you mean what do you what, so what does this each mean contestant of the milfs her sons in the competition trying to find another milf yo that's fucked up though they share the same rooms so, hold on hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so you your mom going on a date no, no no i don't want to talk about but listen no okay, okay and you're both trying to find so, someone me and mom and then mom is looking for like some other someone son. your age, and I'm looking for another someone mom. someone her age. Hey, mommy, <laughs> dude, that's and crazy. you share the same room, like all four of us. Yeah, that's weird. So like, no, you share the same room with your mom. So whatever happens, any mom you bring in, your mom might be watching, and any 
son she brings oh, okay. in, you might be watching. Yo, that's weird. Yo. I've seen an episode. I watched what Chris James watched. It gets savage real quick. There's one mom, the oldest, 59. She, like, literally is bouncing from guy to guy. It's because you're made out of fossils, dude. Dude, she has so much Botox, but she's bouncing a guy to guy. And, like, her son's just like, I can't keep watching this. <laughs> That's crazy. I feel like I'd encourage my mom. Dude, all I'm saying is, like, who said, hey, what's better than Mills on a dating show, but Mills and their sons yeah, on that's a dating kind, show? Honestly, that's kind of low-key fucked up, though. Like, like that's that gonna, means that like, you're into is, people your mom's age. Wh- well, and you're into people your son's age, which means, like, what you're is that? attracted to your son slash mom. That's so fucking... I'm getting mad at this. <laughs> right? I don't. What is this Milk on Annie? Manor. Is, is this on Annie? <laughs> it took the first name to slot. <laughs> yeah. My freak got dropped when decided to drop Milf Manor. <laughs> like, what? Guys, we need something else that's just as What's captivating. Next? Fucking Gertrude's gonna fucking walk on water. Like Jesus Christ Almighty, dude. Dude, what the I, fuck? Reality TV. It makes The Bachelor normal. The Bachelor, I think, is a. I don't think I've never seen it. If I'm I, I, guys, I've said it before. I watched Bachelor, seen it, the Bachelor, but like, and I'm Bachelor will, in Paradise with my wife. I'm more willing to watch The Bachelor than yeah. Milf's fucking sons. You know Dude, what I mean? It's what's a if okay, mom's I, mom. What is what's mom? What what does Milf mean? Mom, <laughs> I like. The I fuck. like the. Fu- what's the son? Is there like a acronym for that? Sylph. That sounds gross. <laughs> <laughs> there's Dilf. There's Milf. There's probably Sylph. There's, there's Gilf. But what if Dilf is also like daughter? So like no, yeah, because no. you can't do that then. Yeah, it's only Milf and Dilf, and then Gilf. You can't forget Gilf. Man. But that could be either Grandpa or Grandma. I know it's interchangeable. Do you say Gimpilf? I'm sorry. What Gimpilf or what is Gimmilf? What is Gimmilf or Gimpilf? It sounds like you're trying to say something, like, but I can't grandma understand. Grandma or it. Grandpa? Like oh, you're Jim putting Milf? GA. Yeah, Jim. Oh, so it, well, it's not D- Ilf. No, I'm saying Jamilf <laughs> for Grandma, or Jipilf, Jipilf <laughs> for Grandpa, Dude. or we could say Jadilf. You know, we, we say should, Granddad. You know what we should do? What? We should do like like a gay ranking. Like I don't know what a twink is. You know what I mean? Do you want to do a Bean Boozled? I don't. There's only four. Okay. You want to do one? No. You do one. I do one. I don't. What it. What is this? What? What? You, what I don't know. It's right there. Why the, not? Do the uh, cute one. Oh the oh yeah, guys! I got Oliver a uh, Valentine's Day gift a couple weeks ago. Uh, I didn't look at these flavors. I should be worried. No. I think. You don't think you didn't look at the flavors either. Yo, you went into that box with such force. You could have cut right through your hand. Just <laughs> ah, dude, professional. <laughs> Pro something. All right. Oh, these are so fun. Oh, there's labeled. We're oh, not... are they? Yeah, they're labeled. Okay. We're not going to look at that. All right, pick one. So me and Oliver are going to have some Valentine's Day flavors. Oh, my God. So cute. So cute. Oh, wait. Hold on. Wait. I don't have mine. Mine are at work. Or is that work? Yeah. Oh, dude. This is fucking... This is on March 6th, guys. This is just yeah, like... we're on March 6th right now. We're it's a little late, guys. Uh, yeah, it's closer to the same Dude, Patty's I Day. I think these are going to cut off my fucking earlobes. This is made of razor blades. I took which, this one. Which one did you take? From the middle right. This one? This one? Yeah. Oh, uh, it looks like puke. I'm going to get the dog food one. Okay, ready? Okay. Hmm. Pleasant. I don't like it. I think it's dog food. Hmm. You want to try the actual one? Want to go for a chance? Oh, no, I got chocolate pudding. Wanna oh, you got for... strawberry cheesecake. Want to go for a chance and just, like, take a chaser with that? I'm not going to. No. No, whatever, dude. Oh, I don't even know what this is. I'll take this one. This What's, one, this one? Could... What's this one? What's this one? What's this one? Red? red. Either old bandage or oh pomegranate. Oh, God, dude. And mine's tutti fruity or stinky socks. Ready? Mine's stinky socks. Can oh I my god, it? mine's not. Oh, pomegranate, baby. Dude, these are hurting every part of my body. Can you not put your disgusting shit on my clothes? Thank you. <laughs> All right. What's well, your idea? 
All right, guys. That was fun. That was a rant. Reality TV is fucking <laughs> weird. This is reality TV. This is the real reality TV. No, really. We got to rank, like, oh, we got to bring Devin on and we can rank gay stuff. Because I don't know what a twink is. And then there's, like, bears. And then there's, like, koalas and yeah, we'll the get, entire animal kingdom. We'll get Devin on. Uh, like, kangaroos. Devin, if you've listened to this podcast, you might, may or may not. And then there's, like. Contact Oliver. There's like Bears 2.0 or Let something. him know he's a Bear 3.0. Am I a 3.0? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what right. a Bear is. Where can they find you, bud? See, that's why you can. I don't know. Uh, you can find me at the Sphere 21 at um any social media platform except for TikTok. I'm Oliver Khan VA. What about your OnlyFans? Uh, the OnlyFans is called actually Only Spheres. It was actually made yesterday by uh, <laughs> someone in my community. Are you serious? <laughs> So that exists now. <laughs> Yo, guys, look, listen. I'm not saying anything, but like, we need help with this podcast. If you guys want to subscribe to his OnlyFans just for the fuck of it, you for you're that watch. More, you're more than likely if you subscribe to Harley, Twitch, fucking subscribe because I know you to watch Twitch. You're even more likely to get me in like some yeah. pretty risque outfits. Yeah, honestly. Harley, you're in charge of the TikToks. Why don't you fucking just subscribe? <laughs> Do your job before you get fired on your right. first day. You can find me at Amor Photography. You can find me at Archangel Films Official online, and you can find this podcast at Nerd Locker Podcast wherever you get them. Maybe I'll get an OnlyFans too. We'll see. All right, bye guys. Bye. Ready? Wait, wait, wait. Here, come here. Ready? Ready? One, two. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's in your shirt, dude. It's definitely in your shirt. I got it in your shirt. Uh. <laughs> nah. Nice. I want this one. Throw it up. Oh, uh, in the air? Oh. <laughs>